This is AIR, Artists in Residence Broadcasting, coming to you once a week from New York City. Hello, I'm John Cullum, and Emily Frankel is sitting right here beside me because cooking she's... up, cooking up an idea. Oh, you're cooking up an idea. Well, John she's a Rist- good cook. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. I'm not talking about cooking that sort of thing. I'm talking about going into the past. Oh, okay. John recently was asked to read something that was related to Arthur Miller's play, The Crucible, which he happens to love. It's a wonderful play, and John was going to direct it at some point at the University of Michigan. They had a wonderful... At the Power Center, yeah. Had a wonderful program there. Well, I suddenly remembered John's relationship to Arthur Miller. They were more than just casual. They were real friends. Yeah, people don't know that about me and Arthur Miller, but uh, I did the the 50th anniversary uh, production of, of uh, uh, All My Sons, which was a very good production. And uh, then I, I directed, I mean, uh, uh, then I uh, worked on The Crucible. And, and then later on, I did a play that had been done only once in New York by Peter Falk called Mr. Peter's Connections. And then I did an original Arthur Miller that never got to New York called the Archbishop's Seal. And that's the one that really interested me because, first of all, you had a very interesting part in that. Yeah. And secondly, oh, when I came to Washington, what's that important place in Washington? The Kennedy the, Center. Yeah, the Kennedy Center. And came there. I remember when I arrived, John cooked me a dinner. Uh, you remember that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> we had string beans neatly on the plate <laughs> and a hamburger neatly positioned. <laughs> And a tiny piece of lettuce, but a cookie were. Yeah. Well, John was working with B.B. Anderson. B. Oh, yeah. Famous B.B. Anderson from Wild Strawberries. Yeah. Beautiful woman. Yeah. And she played, I guess, the leading lady in the Archbishop's right. ceiling. I was the leading guy, and she was the leading lady. And she was so nice to me and so helpful to me. And... So pretty. Yeah. Well, you're one of the. I can tell you a story that not in, not many people. Well, nobody tells this story, and probably I shouldn't. Well, then why are you suggesting it? Are you trying to whet our appetites for it? Tell it. Well, uh, when on opening night, uh, uh, we were doing the Archbishop ceiling, which never quite worked because Arthur had not finished it completely. And uh, uh, it wasn't working that night. And at intermission, Arthur Miller and Bob Whitehead, two of the most famous people, uh, one is a famous producer and the other is the most famous director, I mean uh, writer in American literature practically. And they both came back in a rage and craving and went to Beebe's dressing room and said, you're ruining my play. Can you imagine that? That they were acting like juveniles. Here, are the the most you know these, these people that you wouldn't believe would do anything like. And poor Bibi was in tears, of course. And then, uh, and then, and then another story I can tell you is when we opened. I was at that same place where I cooked you that meal. I was looking out the window because I uh, I saw Arthur Miller walking on the street. And I hollered at him. I said, hey, Arthur, it was a Sunday morning, the day after we'd opened. I said, uh, come up and have a cup of coffee. And Arthur came up, and he was absolutely distraught. And he started talking about uh, the archbishop's ceiling and telling me how it was busting his brain, that he couldn't figure it out. And he started, and he just was in a, a sweat over this play. And then he got into other things. And for two hours, he talked to me. If I'd had a recording of that, I, I, would, it would, I would treasure it. And, and, and then, but nobody would ever believe that, that I heard what I heard. He was telling me all about the, um, the, 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 the uh, death of a salesman and how he'd struggle over that. And, and But it was a wonderful Sunday morning for me and a terrible one for him. But uh, we were 
much closer than anybody ever realized. What an extraordinary story, Joe. Yeah. I had no idea you didn't tell me about that. Well, I haven't told anybody about that story. Well, now we know, now you who are watching this know a great deal about John and his private conversations with Arthur Miller. Yeah. It was just a very interesting thing to see and observe that a major playwright had all the woes yeah. of a young playwright yeah. and that what is woeful for a young playwright is woeful for an older how to make a play work. I have to tell you one quick story about B.B. Anderson. B.B. said one day when we were in rehearsal, Arthur, I'm very uncomfortable with this line. Is there anything you can do to help me or change it? And, and Arthur said, I don't want any actor ever to be comfortable with any of my lines. <laughs> oh, thank you, John. Yes. Oh, John, thanks for talking about this. My and pleasure. We appreciate it. Thank you for asking. And this is John Cullum and M, and we are signing off. This is AIR. See you next week.